cycles is the first time you go through it normally, it's like survival. It's like we kind of throw you in the fire. The second time, because you have more time to study the score and to practice, it's much more musical and much more aesthetic. That's another reason I choose this piece. Okay, I'll keep it. All right, let's get started. Uh, for the orchestration, we'll have flute, oboe, and clarinet one on line one. Uh, on the top line of line two, let's have clarinet two and trumpet one. And on the second line of line two, let's have trumpet two and three and clarinet three. On line four, let's have bass trombone, euphonium, tuba, and that's all. Bass trombone, euphonium, and tuba. Uh, and then at the beginning, we'll just have our trio. You guys are pros by this point. Aaron, John, and Josh here at the beginning. And uh, then once we get to the uh, what, 2D part, let's have both saxophones and tenor trombone join in on the third line. <laughs> Everybody got it. I have a question for everyone before that uh, Andrew starts because I've noticed everyone except Aaron has struggled with this. What gives you your tempo? Is it the ictus point, or is it the distance between ictus points, or is it something else? Who who knows? Who can take a stab at it? What do you mean, what gives us the tempo? What, what gives you the speed of the piece, the tempo of the piece? What sets that? Your hard breath. Brain. Uh, the ictus. No. The distance between the ictus points. I figured that's what you all were going to say. And the reason that I bring this up is especially when you get into this simple duple where we have three eighth notes together and then two eighth notes together. If you rush between during those three eighth notes, that's where everything doesn't line up right because we're watching between the beats to know how long that's going to take, boom. And we that's can a very follow good point. you better that, that And way. it's also how fast you travel between the beats. But whoever said the breath, right. somebody over here said the breath. When the piece starts, yes, it's the breath that gives the tempo. But once it's going, exactly. it's, it's the distance, the travel between. If you, I, I like to use a, 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 if you're in your car and there's a string of stoplights, if they're set correctly, you'll hit all of them green if you're running the speed limit. If you rush to each one, you have to stop and wait, and then rush to the next one and stop and wait. Same thing between beats. If you rush, you're going to have to stop there and wait in order to get everyone right. back together. Okay. And off you go. That's a very good point. Thank you. Yeah. All right. and this baton fits you so well. I would, instead of holding it like this, okay. I would try to hold it like this. 
and then you'll be able to conduct even more from the tip. So I want you to okay. try that, okay? Um, and if we want to do part of this again. Let's do the last page again. And um, you're, you're living in the three time zones. You see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Even with the solo, he's trying to get you to. He's seeing a lot of foreheads. Are we, are we starting to memorize the music now? No. Look up as much as you possibly can, because there's a lot that's being shown that's, that's not revealing itself in the music. Here's the last page again, please. Mm -hmm. Exaggerate what you see. But uh, <laughs> it was across the ensemble, too. You have a really strong sense of self, like Aaron. And yours is very musical. And it, it, it makes everybody feel very comfortable to play for you. Because we feel like you know your stuff, and we're going to make music. And it always feels that way when we come on the board. So thank you for that. Nice job. We're going to start with win on two.